What episode is this? 76. 76. 77. 76. <laughs> On tonight's episode, we're going to talk about Sendero. And we're going to get stiff. Also, we have an unboxing. Stay Ooh. tuned. Every week on the show, we cover custom builds, upgrades, we do community events. We also race all across Western Canada. Yes. So we do always post a video up on Facebook and YouTube at 7 o'clock on Fridays, but we also do a Facebook Live every Thursday at around 6 o'clock. Sometimes we're live in the sticks. Yep. Sometimes we're just shortly after 6. Yes. But check us out. Facebook Lives at 6 p.m. or roughly there every Thursday. At 6. Roughly thereafter. It's an hour after 5. Correct. But usually right An hour before six. 7. We finish at 7. Episode 76. This is welcome to episode 42 and a half, 72.3 AP 469. The blast. Uh, part 7. 7. Welcome. Welcome. Episode 76. Ultra RC Hobby Show. He's Chris. He is Aaron. So on tonight's episode, Chris has built the Enduro to a Turdero. Yes. We'll cover that a little bit later. Yes. Uh, we also have UDR footage because he got stiff. No footage yet. Oh. Well, now I feel I just like finished dirt. putting it back together. So what'd you do? I took apart the entire truck because I went out in all that water and all that sand. So the entire truck got disassembled. It didn't get clean, though. It's pretty clean. No. I didn't clean the main chassis. That's the only thing. Or the interior panels. All the internals. Or the shocks. Just shut. <laughs> all the internals have all been rebuilt. Okay. Uh, but no, I didn't pressure wash the chassis or anything because I'm going to take it out on Saturday and just get it dirty again. Mm. So, hmm. I, 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 I get you. It's in 100% running condition. Oh, okay. 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 So you put some hot racing sway bars yeah, on Yeah. So I put the hot racing sway bars on the front and the rear. And these also include a drill bit because they're bigger than the stock ones. So the truck is very stiff now. So I'm very excited to see how it drives. Very nice, very yeah, nice. Man. And then uh, we also have an unboxing. Yeah, what are we unboxing? The B6. 1D. Your new build? Yeah, my new build. Ooh. So we're getting ready for winter. So you want to show first? Do you want to do you want to do, do you want to just go like right into like UDR stuff? We get some footage. I don't have any footage. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Tired. I have some footage of the Enduro before I put the TRX axles on it. Well, I guess we could do How that. How about that? Do you want some of that? I guess so. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, here's that footage. So yeah, I uh, I converted the the uh, Enduro axles, put on some TRX axles. Hence I, why we call it a Turdero. Turdero. 
Yeah. Yeah. I get it now. I really like the, the portal axles, so I took the axles off my blazer because I was just going to mock them up first, and then I just kind of went all the way and put them on. So I have a question. Yeah. We're going to do this as a budget build. Is it really budget anymore? Well, I mean, the axles didn't cost me much. But I mean, kind of confused. Yeah, it's not really a budget build anymore. Well, it's a custom build. But we call, still we, on a but, budget though. Technically, I bought new axles for my TRX, so those axles cost me 125 bucks. Okay, I get you. Fair. I won't hold it against yeah. you. So that's Only pretty cheap bit. compared to buying all the parts new and everything. Okay. I'm still building it on a budget. So how did this TRX axle fit? underneath the enduro very well uh the rear almost bolted perfectly on i did have to extend the upper links a little bit more uh just to fit the driveline angle a little bit better okay but the front i've been doing a lot of pan hard issues and stuff uh these axles like the original ones are designed really high in the chassis whereas the trx ones are designed to be really low yeah so i run into a lot of issues with pan hard and everything so I'm running a TRX4 shock towers with the panhard mount too, and I'll be running a TRX4 servo mount. So the front end has been really finicky, and I do have to flip the enduro transmission. They do include a uh, an input shaft, so you're able to do that. Nice. So you, I can do that without an issue. Yeah, so at that point, would you actually physically have to change the gearing inside of it too? No. So you wouldn't overdrive the rear? No. That all, all you do is take that and just flip it around. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, I mean, you do have nice. to flip something in the transmission, though. Yeah, everything just don't. gets rotated. Yeah, because, yeah. like, if you don't, you're going to have overdrive in the rear. And exactly, the yeah. yeah like, and oh, then nice. they give you an input shaft instead of being at the one end, it's on the other end. So, what is your overall opinion of that truck? I know we kind of talked about it last week, but we did take it on the trails yep. after we filmed the show. Yes. Um, and honestly, like, I drove it. It was really, really cool. Yeah. Minus uh, with the TRX four axles, there's a lot of uh, like gearing, and it gears it down a significant it, it amount. It was slow. That's, that's slow as molasses. It was in not January. slow as molasses. It was slightly over a walking pace. Slightly. Which, honestly. How how slow do you walk? Honestly, it's not bad. But uh, I am going to be playing with the gearing a little bit more. But you do run into those issues, right? Especially yeah. when you run into portals, because it's almost like five to one or six to one or something it was ridiculously slow but i will like, say the underdrive overdrive really made a significant amount of difference at that speed yes you could like for sure tell i can't wait to try it on some rocks mm -hmm. that's the one thing with deep maker is there's not many rocks yeah so i'm gonna try to get out to the university this week here and try some rocks so let's kind of build like do a build breakdown yep so on a scale of one to ten how do you think the build was the instructions I wasn't extremely happy with, but I mean, did the build make up it's for a basic, the poor It's a basic crawler build, so it's it's a good truck. I mean, yeah. I don't mind it. I would take it over an SCX10 to rocket. But I again, would say that one to ten, my friend. One to one ten. To 10. One to ten scale. Ooh. So well, let's break it I down it then, because I mean, the instructions you said are pretty poor. So I mean, as a side note with huge asterisk, yeah. maybe for the basic builder, like if you've never built an RC before, yeah. this might be one of those kits that you really want to make sure you watch some videos maybe and really double check. Just make and ask sure you questions. have the proper, proper equipment to build it. That's the thing mm. is the link length. They don't really give you anything in the book to measure with. True. Very so true. that's the biggest thing and then the part numbers don't line up so as long as you're good at taking a, a picture and relating it to a part not so bad you do just so we, got, we got a seven on build price what do you think the price they're like 320 bucks yeah one to uh, ten good price bad price i give it a yeah i give it a seven not bad so would you give under then, 350 mm -hmm. so would you give an scx 10 to higher then because the scx 10 to raw builders is like 270, 280, somewhere. Yeah, but I really don't like the vehicle in general from the 10, <laughs> especially the transmission. Yeah, the That's basic the biggest thing gear, yeah. that that sold me on this truck compared to the an, ax an axial. True. Is the transmission. Besides yeah. that, it's basically an SCX 10 too. Yeah. Would you recommend this truck to anybody that is looking at doing a raw builder's kit? So yeah. SCX 10, this, you know, maybe a TRX4 Sport. Yeah, depending on uh, how aggressive you want to drive. Mm -hmm. I think that out of like an SCX-102, uh, the Enduro or a TRX raw kit, I think the TRX is going to be a better kit overall. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit more pricey. But I mean, you get a body and wheels and tires. You get a lot of, and you get a lot better vehicle overall, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So I guess then this versus SCX-102. 
The Enduro. Yeah. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. This is Deeb's approved. <laughs> Which is why I'm putting TRX axis, right? Because I'm trying to make it the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Have that underdrive overdrive, have the portals, have all that weight down low. Yeah. Very nice. Very Making nice. My, make it well, maybe, this is, maybe this is what we should do more often. I, I, I don't know. Maybe the you guys should comment down below what you think about us doing build breakdowns. If you think this is a good way to rate it, how you would rate it, maybe. You know, give us some insight on if you want this to continue. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm doing a build right now, and we're going to see some footage of that here in a bit. Um, is, is it something you guys would like to see? Something that you wouldn't like to see? Give us some insight. So, comment down below. Right down there. So, yeah. Let's get right into B6 unboxing. So, brand new kit that I just picked up. I've already built one of these, so I kind of know the ins and outs of it. Yep. Um, so, we're going to talk about unboxing the car and some of the parts that I would recommend you guys to pick up if you wanted to build one and come race with us out in Dunder. Something to check out. So, here's some footage. Ooh, dowie. It's a new kit day. Pretty pumped. We'll do B61D. I mean, this is really B61D number two. The original B6D, 61D, and they're just doing a refresh for this winter. So this is going to be kind of a quick walkthrough of the B61D unbox, things that I put in this car to make it good for the indoor track out in Dundurn. So obviously I have the seals cut already, I did put my parts in here, so let's open her up. Bum, 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 two of the buggy kit, do 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 do. This is brand making new. Just just got it. So first things first, got the same B6 body that was on that car. It's the same. So don't let anyone fool you. Just cut different. Same body. <laughs> Things are falling out like the wing. It does have a team associated snap on the back. It's pretty cool. The new redesigned chassis. It doesn't have the associated logo in the front anymore uh, like the old B6 chassis did. It's a little bit different. Hubs, drive shafts. This car is going to come with the good picture of it. The new 67 millimeter dog bones, which was an upgrade to the old B6. Uh, it's going to come with a new laid back transmission, not laid down, laid back, and it is going to have these new plastic diff height inserts. Um, so this being the new uh, D car, B61D. Um, this is going to come with a silver clutch, and this is a new spur gear for this car. Uh, but it's also going to come with a ball diff, which if you buy the carpet car, it comes with a gear diff. So as per usual, Associated gives you your clear diff grease uh, and your black high pressure grease. So ball diff's been around like forever in this car, forever in a decade. And let's what else are we going to grab in here? This is going to be the shock bag. Um, the team associated does a really darn good job with their shocks. Um, nice darn pistons, darn guides, um, and they always put X rings in these kits. So really, really nice shock package. Um, this is something that chazzled a lot of people. This bag right here. So on the B61D, it does not use a gear cover anymore. The only thing that this gear cover is going to be good for is if you convert to the three gear or four gear stand-up transmission. It does not work with this current car. Um, there's going to be an extra shock tower, um, see your top there, a shock tower protector, um, some rod ends, extra stuff like that. Uh, this is going to be your tie rod bag uh, with the turnbuckle wrench. This is going to be all your inserts for the uh, C hub or C block and D block and your rear arms. It's also going to come with, um, these are the new inserts for shock position. So if you look in the back of these arms, if I can get a good video, there it is, um, it actually doesn't have the regular holes like you would get uh, on most standard arms and that's why you use these inserts now. So they're going to be uh, like an off center and if you flip this, so it'll go from the inside and then if you flip it 180 degrees, it's going to be on the outside. So you can change stuff up like that now, which is a little bit different. Um, this car is going to have uh, regular, just standard steering, so a C-Hub car, um, kind of pretty standard. does also have inserts for the height of uh, the C-Hub, so you can actually move the C-Hub up or down using those inserts. 
Uh, everything else is pretty much standard in here. You get your ball stud spacers, everything like that. This car also is going to take advantage of the new steering plates. Those ones were right there. Um, so back in the day, you had to use like the shell. I think they were number ones or number twos on the B6s to get more steering out of them. You do not need that anymore because it's going to come with stock. It's also going to come with a front carbon tower as well as the rear carbon tower. Um, so this is going to be able to use multiple different inserts for the shocks. These are new arms. Uh, also on the D kit you are going to get uh, flat arms, or sorry, gullwing arms. You can see there's a little bit of gall to them. Um, they used to come with flat arms, which they changed in the 6.1D. What else is in here? Going to get some stickers, which is pretty standard. Gonna get wheel nuts, all that stuff in this bag, and a really long antenna tube with some Velcro if you so desire to use it um, to lock the body on, no more body clips. So this is gonna be your steering assembly and your upper bulkhead. Nothing too crazy here. And this kit's also gonna come with hybrid bearings. And if you don't know what I mean by hybrid bearings, um, one side has a shield, so this is the blue shield, so that's rubber. And as you can see on these little bearings, uh, they are actually steel. So um, that is going to be a steel shielded bearing, a little bit less resistance in here. Definitely not as good, however, um, for keeping the dirt out. So with the rubber shields, you always want to put that out facing the debris side. So that's that. And in the bottom here, we get our handy dandy team associated manual. Pretty standard, nothing too crazy going on here. Not colored, nothing too crazy. Uh, but a really good manual, they do have a lot of tips and tricks in there as well. So now getting to the things that I do on all of my cars, let's move this box out of the way. Just slow it on the floor. The things I do to my car. First thing first, and this should be on any build, not just the B61D, an aluminum servo horn. Make sure you get the right one. I always do prefer the clamping horns. So what that means is there's an extra screw that goes through it sideways and clamps on the servo adds a little bit more strength to the splines. The other really big one is the brass C-block. This is gonna add an extra 23 grams to the rear end of that B61. And if, especially if you're running on dirt, I don't know if it makes as much difference on carpet, but if you're running on dirt, you definitely want a little bit more weight on the rear end, but you definitely don't want it hanging off the back. So if you change, say, the D-block, it would actually be hanging back on the back side of the axle. And what that's going to create is a pendulum effect and it is not going to transfer weight evenly and equally every single time you hit the throttle. So you can actually have a car that, you know, performs really good sometimes at the corners and then other times it's going to perform not so great. So yeah, that's definitely one thing with the C-Block. Uh, the next thing is aluminum rear hub carriers. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this. I did do it on that one, that B61D. Uh, but I never did it on my B60, so a little bit extra weight, and you do have a lot more adjustment because um, now you use a ball stud in the bottom and you can lift or lower the uh, actual ball stud by using spacers. So it's quick, easy, painless. Um, aluminum diff height inserts. So this is something that I've never really used. Um, the guys down at High Performance Distributors said, hey, you should use this. It really does affect how the power goes through the transmission, especially if you are going to be using a higher turn motor, six and a half, five and a half, especially if you're gonna be running like big tracks, which I don't think I will, but you never know. You might take this car down to Chillac for next year. And then the two things that I've never bought before, but I wanted to try, um, just as a kind of like a tuning option. Um, so this is the nine gram, and this is the 13 gram aluminum uh, chassis weights they do come with some hardware so this hardware goes up from the bottom of the chassis and threads right in so those are going to be like these little screw holes right here and that's where those plates are going to go so it's obviously pretty standard looking this one's going to fit in there this one's going to fit in there and it's going to go under servo for example for the front one and this one might be a little bit more of a pain just because your electronics um, usually go in this section of the chassis right there so um, definitely one thing that I want to try. You can also get these in steel or you can get them in brass if memory serves me correct. You can also get the Reedy brass battery tray weight as well. So yeah, this is just something that I wanted to try. I don't know if it's super necessary or not, but adding weight easily like this, especially under the servo, which is probably the one I'm going to use the most, 
just because it's going to give a little bit more weight on the front of the car, but it's not so much weight that it's going to make it handle really bad. Always a fear with adding too much front weight is the car is going to start just pushing. So you're going to be turning and the car is just going to want to go straight instead of actually turning because you have too much weight dropping down in the nose and you're braking traction free because you are at the maximum limit of traction. So now you got to build front traction, which is sometimes hard on these cars because you can build so much corner speed that when you get back on the throttle, they just bust free and they're super tricky. So we'll see what happens. I'm really excited. We're about two months away from the indoor season. And you have a box and, well, not really a box anymore, but a bag full of parts. So let's get building. Remember, always uh, have some handy dandy Walter with you. It's good for you. Um, definitely some brake clean. It's never a bad idea. And always, always, always blue Loctite uh, and a decent set of tools. I'm going to be using my honey tools on this kit. So let's get started. Well, that was the end of episode, episode 76. 76. 76. So on the build footage uh, and the unboxing, we're going to show a little bit more of it next week. Yep. It was a little bit on the long side, so we had to <laughs> put it into two. Really? <laughs> I saw you start to giggle. I just lost it. Sorry. This is the low quality productions that we produce. <laughs> Just him, really. Uh, I mean, the camera guy's awesome, and I feel like I'm probably. No, I'm pretty sure guy. I saw Chuck giggle too. <laughs> he is giggling. I'm right not now. completely innocent here. Come on, yeah. I just lost. He can't it. even look at us. I anymore. just lost it more than anyone else. Yeah, Russell four x four box. So yeah, um, that was the end. <coughs> Episode number seventy six. I'll trust the Abby show. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and, and subscribe. subscribe. Don't forget to share with all your friends on Facebook. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram. And Facebook yes. and YouTube, yes. RC Deebs. Yes. Hit them up on Snapchat, DJ Debert. Don't forget to check out the website, www.ultrarchobbies.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube. Obviously, Ultra RC Hobbies. Pretty yes. easy to find. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Here you go.